Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boxer, the technical trader. My site, as you can see, the techtrader.com. Uh, that's a picture of me. I've been doing this longer than most people I know um, since I'm 13 and I'm 76. So uh, I think after a few years, I finally got it right. But today we're going to talk about what I don't normally don't talk about. And that means uh, I usually talk about day trading because I am a day trader. I, I trade one minute charts, uh, intraday setups. Um, I wrote a book called Profitable Day and Swing Trading. Um, I, uh, through Wiley and Sons. It's currently out of print. I've gotten the rights to it. I'll be publishing my own book shortly and you'll be able to get it. Um, the book is titled Profitable Day and Swing Trading Using Pattern Recognition to Identify the Best Bullish Setups and uh, things of that nature. But I created a site 22 years ago called The Tech Trader because I felt like uh, it, people needed better instruction. I see a lot of wannabes. I see a lot of people who have great videos and they promise the moon. And they talk about a lot of stuff, but really, when I've really investigated these people, for the most part, most of my competitors don't do what I do. There are a couple of people out there, a couple of my associates that I deal closely with that really know what they're doing and know how to read charts and know how to do analysis work. Um, but part of the work is um, not just the, the technical aspects of trading, because it takes a while to learn how to trade stocks and how to learn chart patterns and, and do technical analysis. Um, but today, I want to talk about what I think is going to be needed what most people are missing, and that is um, three things. Proper preparation, being able to focus on what you want to do during the day and on a, on a small universe. Now, I'm different. I supply a lot of ideas to people all day because there are different people on my site, hundreds of them, that some want low price stocks, some like the higher price stocks, some like the NASDAQ 100, and some like the QQQs and, SP and the SPIs. Um, so I believe I have to a service everybody. So I put a lot of ideas out there every day. But when you come into my site, sometimes it's a little confusing because there's a lot of ideas put out there all the time. But one of the most important things I think that doesn't occur is the proper preparation. I don't think people really know what to do when they come in. They they open the screen, this market opens, and they look for the active stocks and, and they put on a trade and they may look at the charts. And there's a lot of people that know technical analysis. Um, I'm a big believer that um, the vast majority of, of technical analysis is, is a, a strong, not nearly perfect science, but I think that the interpretation by human beings of those patterns are what causes the patterns, the, the human emotions that set in, the, the fact that people react and overreact. Um, they panic uh, both up and down, panic to buy, panic to sell. Those are opportunities for traders. The most important part about trading, in my opinion, is how you set up your morning and how you prepare. Folks, I come in, I'm in Los Angeles, so I get up at quarter to four every morning. It's 3.45 a.m., except for the weekends, of course. But when I get up in the morning, I'm on a site by just before four o'clock. Um, I'm looking for ideas. What ideas I'm looking for are stocks that are gapping in pre-market, stocks that are surging in pre-market, stocks that are surging by a big percentage of difference of volume, five, 10, 20 times normal volume, even in pre-market. I want to see the news. That's the only time. The only time that I actually get involved with looking at news is in the morning when I'm looking to see why a stock may be popping. Eventually, when you come on my site, you will see this. Now, this is my, my market miner on the left, six NASDAQ level twos of, of six of the stocks we're trading that day. And the five minute NASDAQ, five minute S&P, hourly NASDAQ and hourly S&P. That's what I chiefly look at every day and what I monitor all the time, intraday, nonstop for my people. And you can see the market had one hell of a plunge after Mr. Powell opened his big mouth today. <laughs> um, but yet, I'll tell you something else about today's day. I'm just on a little, little uh, getting off the subject for a moment, that when you take a look at how bad the decline was, it wasn't that bad technically. As a matter of fact, on NASDAQ, there were more investors than declines by a small margin, which was amazing to me. Uh, and even the up-down volume was only three to two negative. It wasn't that bad a day. Now, often the other thing to consider is that when the FOMC speaks and the market goes in one direction, it often goes the opposite way. And many times, 75% of the time, the market will go in the opposite direction by the end of the next day. So I'm not necessarily that negative about what happened today, although there's a lot of people in Wall Street that were very disappointed by not. It's not a question of what they said per se, it's, it's what they infl inferred. And I think that Joe, uh, Mr. Powell doesn't get it. He doesn't know uh, what Wall Street likes and what he doesn't like. So let's assume you're coming in the morning 
and you're trying to figure out how to set up your day. What I do is create a focus list. And that focus list is usually anywhere between eight to 15 stocks of stocks that really are charging up, shoot or not. Now here's a, a look at my focus list from this morning. Not necessarily in that order, okay? But I will give you, a, I will look through a, a bunch of charts. And this is one that I had this morning on a one minute chart intraday. Arrowhead pre-market had popped and coiled. Okay, and by the time the market opened, right about there, 9.30 was 37.80. It popped and coiled. When it broke out here, I put a day trade on it at 38.65 with a target of 40 and 41. We reached 40, 65, 60, something like that. Um, so, you know, what was a, a great the day trade, but a $2 day trade uh, or about a three, uh, let's see, yeah, something like four or five percent trade, and I'll take it every day. And what, what we what we look for are stocks that are trending in channels, stocks that continue to hold support, move above their moving averages and trend lines. Um, another example is Atamera, which came down and popped. Now this was one that I was watching from yesterday. It's also a, a tech trader swing that yours truly put on when it broke out and pulled back right there. So at six, and uh, I think when, the, when I waited for the breakout at 695, and then you can see today it hit 10 and change, 1004 from, from, from 695 in just a week. So an excellent day trade for my people, about a 50% in a week. I'll take that all year long. Um, BLDR, a perfect example of a stock that was surging big time pre-market. And by the time it opened, it just spiked and went into a long consolidation. Now, there wasn't a big trade there, but I gave this out as a pre-market buy trade. Uh, they trade right there at about 102, and it did reach my target at 107.8. Uh, here, it reached 107.80. So, um, you know, we'll have five, five and a half point trade on builders for a source. I look for momentum. I look for stocks that are surging and have real uh, potential for a day trade. The CCOI was another coach and pop pre-market pullback and formed a little wedge. I put a buy on it there at about 73. It reached, uh, I had a target of 75 and 77, but we only got to 75, 74.98. So it was profitable, but it wasn't a game changer, that's for sure. Chegg, when I saw a stock do this, explode from the get-go and then put this on, this was not a pre-market, but that's the beauty. When I, um, I, I have several hundred people in my room, uh, upwards of a thousand at times, of people that will uh, looking at the market as well as I am. I have two eyes. I can only see X amount of charts, right? But I'm constantly being bombarded with ideas that people said, take a look at this, it's breaking out. This was one I didn't see pre-market because it wasn't doing anything. And actually, it actually took a dip and it opened. But take a look at the opening salvo. Explosive move, pull back for a nice retracement from the coil. And when it broke out there, it finally put the trade on at about 10 and a quarter. And my target was 11. Guess where it tagged? 11.07, um, and my next target was 11 and a quarter, but didn't quite get there and flitted it away. But this is just an example of the kind of stocks we follow every day. And when you come into my room at thetechtrader.com and you'll find um, that I'm given from the get-go. If you're not there early, you're missing out on a lot of information. I constantly, am, I do actually a live webinar at 5.15 uh, Eastern every day for one hour, hour and 15 minutes before the opening. And I'll go over this entire focus list all the charts in pre-market, what they're looking like, and what the setups look like. And I might might issue by around six o'clock or nine o'clock Eastern, I'll issue some buy alerts, upwards of six to eight. Today was almost a dozen. There was so many stocks that look good. EXPI was another. And, and take a look at the pop pre right at the opening. Now pre-market, it wasn't doing anything. But when it popped and then came down and formed the coil, that's where I gave a day trade on it at about 12.59. And it reached 13.09, not a lot, 50 cent pop, but look, most of my trades are profitable. Some are very profitable, as you'll see a little bit later. GDC, another example of the stock, and I, I'm a big Elliott Wave aficionado. I, I'm not, I'm not uh, a genius at it, but I know enough to be dangerous. Um, when I saw the breakaway gap and halt, and then the pullback, right there to support, and it started to bounce, I put a buy on it there at 650. I said, let's look for a five wave advance. One, two, three, four, and the big fifth wave advance, right to the channel top, from 650 to 941 in a half an hour. At that point, I urged everyone to exit and stage and get out and look what happened the rest of the day. 
Um, I'm more interested in the preparation of the moik. That you have to focus. Now, the one problem, as I said, when you come to my site, is that there's a lot of ideas. Again, I'm going to repeat this. Come join us at thetechtrader.com. Free trial, as you can see here, 10-day free trial, no credit card. Just come see what we're up to and make some money before you even start. And you probably can pay a year's worth of um, uh, my fees, which are my subscription fees, which aren't big to begin with. Uh, at the very least, if not two years, that's what I've been told by a lot of people who came in for two weeks and made a lot of money and paid for, you know, they're basically uh, paying for my subscription for, for a couple of years, if not more. So uh, the bottom line is though, when you come in, there's a lot of ideas that I'm putting out there. So I want to be, uh, want, want you to be careful when you first come in to peruse the place. You know, in other words, do some fake trades, take some paper trades and, and, and see what you're comfortable with. Uh, because the bottom line is, is all day, um, I'm assisting you. When I put out a buy alert, I tell you what the stops, targets are, and I monitor those trades all day. Every, you know, 10 minutes after the market opens, I, like for right about here, let's see, 947, right about here on this stock, I would have come on board and said, stock just popped and it's pulled back and it's forming a wedge. So this stock looked good to me and I put out a day trade on generic, Generac at around 109, or I think it was, and it went up to 120, I believe, let's see, 121 change. So very nice 10 point trade there, if not 11 uh, on the generic. But the key is that every 45 minutes to an hour, I'm back on live. When I do a webinar, my charts are up all day. I don't take my webinar down at all, all day. I may not be talking, but you'll see me looking at the charts. You'll see me scrolling through various charts and you'll see me drawing my lines and these lines mean something to me. Um, here's a perfect example of a perfect day trade. Um, in the morning, immunogen, um, positive drug news, went vertical from six and change to, I believe, 12, 1221. Then it coiled and when it popped out there, I put a day trade on it, right there at 1050 uh, or thereabout. And within an hour, it was 1330. Um, and then it formed a wedge and I said, I put a second day trade on it right there when it broke out at 1165. And you can see that after hours, it reached 129013 again. So there's a trade, we, we do multiple trades at times. Uh, but more importantly, you need to be organized and prepared. One of the reasons why people come to thetechtrader.com is for my preparation. I, I consider what I do as good as anybody out there in terms of finding stocks and following them and monitoring them and continually raising my stops or raising my targets or telling you to exit a third, exit a half, exit your position. I'm constantly giving instructions to do that. If you follow me and do not detract and be disciplined, I think you'll do very well in trading at thetechtrader.com, anywhere for that matter. People tell me that two months in my room is like two years in a classroom because I teach and I like doing it. I, I've also, I'm in the process of doing a master class uh, on, on trading uh, around my book, Profitable Day in Swing Trading, that I think you'll enjoy when you get to see it. Um, INGR, another example of stock that popped, pulled back and really didn't go anywhere all day. So they don't all work per se. But when the market opened, it popped and pulled back and then formed this little wedgie here, which I gave a buy on when it broke out at about 109. And shortly thereafter, it was trading at 112. So you were able to get three points that way quickly. But you can see they don't all work perfectly. I'm, I'm not going to sit there and tell you that they do. But 70, 75% of the time, my trades work. LABU, perfect example of a stock that really worked. I trade this stock almost every day. I love this. This is the biotech triple bull, very leveraged. Uh, you can see that at 9.30, this was going nowhere. And at 9.30, it just popped. When that first pullback occurred right there, I'll show it to you in reverse. Yeah, we, this is it right here. So it popped and pulled back. It formed a little wedge. That wedge broke out. I put a buy on it right there at 582. The targets were 605 and 620. Here's what it did the rest of the day. First target, 605 to the penny. I just happened to have that line out there. Why? Because it was a prior high there, and I thought it was going to at least retest that area. It did. And that's the coil. Look at that bull coil. That's why I was optimistic that stock would reach a second target as well if, if and when it broke out. Didn't break out yet. There you go. Bingo, breakout. And look where it reached. 640. 
I had raised my target during the day to 640, hit 644. And at the end of the day, the market pullback, of course, it settled back, but not too bad. Eli Lilly. Now, this one had a major dr drug news, of, or Alzheimer's drug, and the stock really took off. It went up 40 points, 40, 403 to 444. It then came down in a one, two, three, four, five wave decline, and then retested and broke out. That's where I put a day trade on it at 422. My target, 430, 33, 29 and 33, hit 434. So, I mean, when you're in the at my site, I'm monitoring and, and babysitting you all day. That's my job. That's what I do, and I love doing it. So, again, the reason I'm showing you all of this is to show you that every morning we come in, we do have a focus list of stocks that we want to trade. SMCI was a great one today. It popped and formed the pre-market bull coil and broke out. Right when the market opened, I put a buy on it at 116 and a half. My targets were 119 and 24, I believe. And then I raised it to 30. It actually hit 136. So fantastic trade for my traders on that one uh, today. Just beautiful, beautiful trade. How about this one, SNTG? Pop, pull back coil, falling wedge. I waited until this broke out here and put a trade on it. Now, we tested, but it didn't break support and then went vertical. That was a nice trade. When it broke out here, I did another trade. It, it literally went from 470 to 640 or $1.70 in a few minutes. Um, Sapiens, another, it coiled. Put a day trade there at about 22 and a quarter. After hours, it's 23 and 46. TGTX, beautiful rising channel. Uber was another one. Pop, pull back. When it started to move again, we put a day trade right about, it broke through that line right there. That was at about 36.80. It made it up to 38.25, just short of my real target, which was 38 and a half. But an ample, ample uh, time to make a profitable trade. Here's a really good little low price trade. I, like, I really like this company. UIS, gap, run, and flag. I'm going to pop right there. I put a trade on at four. I think it was 405 when it pulled back, right? It made it to 440, I believe, 439, and then backed off. But I also put a swing on it. Why? This long-term declining top line is being tested. It, it looks like it wants to break out. I think it's going to. My targets are six and a half and nine or something of that nature. I think I have six and eight now, playing it a little bit more conservatively. Yeah, right about there. Well, anyway, so the point of showing you all of this is to show you that you need to be prepared to trade, that too many people are not prepared properly. One of the things I talk about in my book is that, you know, when stocks close strong the prior day, they're candidates. They're candidates for day trades. Because they, if they close strong, they have a good shot at opening strong the next day and maybe giving you a follow through. So that's about the only time I've ever really condoned overnight trading, when a stock closes as strong as you can. But we're day traders for the most part. Now, I do have a swing trade service. I, is, I issue three or four swing trades a week. Uh, sometimes more, sometimes less. I've gone two weeks with no swing trades when I thought the market was in, a little dicey and, and maybe not a good, good time to be putting swings on. But for the most part, um, I monitor my swings. I monitor my day trades. Uh, I, I babysit um, my, my people and my stocks. So what you, could, what you need to do, again, is prepare properly, come in with a, a good attitude. If you have anything going on in your life, folks, of a negative nature, you're, being, you're going through a divorce, um, a death in a family, whatever it is that's causing you to be down or upset, that's not a time to be trading. I strongly suggest, no matter how addicted you are to stock trading, just walk away or step back when things aren't going right, whether it be just trading isn't going right or you have something in your life that's causing you to not focus properly because the number two thing you need to do is focus. Now, what time management is part of focusing. Uh, I, 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 here's what I mean. That, I, I really believe that the people buy, uh, watch too many things, trade too many things. They overtrade, um, and they, what they do is they sell their winners and, and and they don't sell their losers. And before you know it, they have a pile of crap in their portfolio. Um, the most important thing about trading, in my opinion, is the stop loss. Um, that's part of the discipline. When you get to a target, and by the way, when I give you, uh, let me give an example if I can of what I'm talking about when you get into my room.
one sec. Okay. I'm going to log into my, my, my room that you'll see what's going on in a site. Right now, we have all these people talking about all the stocks that are going up. It looks like PACW, for example, is getting crushed in after hours. Maybe in the next one to go down. Look at that chart. Just dropped from six and a half to two and change, folks. So obviously, something very bad happening there. Uh, they've announced they're weighing strategic options, including a sale. Looks like it could be the next one to go down. But during the course of the day, let me give you an example. I may issue a buy alert. I don't usually issue them later in the day. Here's IMGN. This was the, on, at 1241. That was right there. IMGN at 1241. I was saying, if it pops this coil with volume, the target's at 1245.50 and 1325.50. Well, it got up to 1280 some odd after hours, but during the course of the day, it did reach 1270. So certainly met target number one by far and moved from about you know, 11, inch, uh, 11 and a half to 1270. I'm $1.20 in the last hour and a half. Um, so, and so that's um, how I issue a trade. I'll show you the symbol and I'll give you the support and I'll give you instructions. But I issued day alerts that way. PTRT, another example of a day trade alert. PRTA, that was issued at uh, 11.56, which was right there, at about 64. And you can see it reached 68.25 or four points plus um, in the next few hours. But it's really cool because you can post in my room at any time. You can uh, click on anybody's name and send them a private message. A window pops up. Let me show it to you. This is the room. I was on the wrong screen, my apologies. Here's where I issued the IMGN and the targets, which are tagged. There was one earlier, PRTA. My target was 67 and 69.70. They reached 68 and a quarter, four points. Um, so all day I'm monitoring, um, and this is what the trend, the, uh, it looks like in my room where you can Click on Susie Q if you want to send her a message, a private message box, and you can start typing anything you want. So that's, a, that's an example of, uh, or a look at my trading room. And um, it's a fun place to be, a lot of really smart traders in there. So again, I'm just going to repeat one last time. The number one key thing in trading is preparation, in my opinion. One of the things and one of the reasons to be in my room is because you get that preparation from my work in the morning. And I spend a lot of time pre-market, two and a half hours before we even open, almost three hours, two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes of going over charts, going over news, looking at patterns, you know, and eventually putting out buy alerts. And then market opens and within 10 minutes of the opening. I have a, uh, what I call my first update where I go over the early chart patterns and eliminate the ones that don't seem to be working early on and the ones that are working. Usually we got a, a several poppers that fly, that type of thing. Um, so many good ideas today. The market was terrific, as you see, Uber, UIS, and a few others that we talked about earlier. So we had 20 stocks I was watching today that were running. Well, it was one of those days. And yet, here's what the market did today. Down. If you look up in the left-hand corner here, Dow was down 270, S&P down 29, NDX down 83. And we had runners. My job is to find stocks that move no matter what the market's doing. Up and down. I don't just go long too. Uh, today, though, I didn't really have any uh, shorts at all. Um, when the market reached its peak, I suggested a couple of the, of the bear ETFs. But even with this pullback, they didn't do great today. Let, let me show you something. TZA, which is small cap, finally moved at the very end of the day in the last hour. But you know, this market was, and, and also the other the other ones I follow are SOSX and SQQQ. And um, LABD, those are principally the four, uh, and FAZ, those are the four or five ETFs I follow closely. Financials, biotech, the uh, you know uh, semiconductors, and small caps. So uh, that, that's the way to go, in my opinion, and what to look at. Okay, so we've gotten through what I consider the pre-market look. But what's more important, and what do you have to do during the day? The number one thing I think that people do is they lose focus. 
They follow too many things. Once the market opens, you make a decision that you don't need to maybe make more than two or three trades a day. You really don't to make good money. As a matter of fact, it's well known that the first 90 minutes is where most money's made as well as the last 90 minutes. That's why a lot of traders take off long lunches. Not much is happening usually around lunch hour. You give or take 90 minutes between um, three and, you know, uh, excuse me, between 12 and 1.30 Eastern, right? So I, I recommend strongly that you focus on just two or three stocks. And also portfolio management is another factor that is very important. Um, for example, when you have a $100,000 account, I never recommend putting more than 25% of your account in any one stock, ever. Being overly weighted is a way to really get killed. All it has to do is go against you. If you have three stocks that's in your portfolio, which I don't recommend having more than that, I really think if you're a trader now, not an investor, but if you're a trader, if you're either swing trading or day trading, you it's enough um, for your mindset to be watching three stocks. It really is. Anything more than that, um, you know, five maybe, three or four or five, if you're really a professional and you're good at it. But I, I can tell you right now that um, you'll start to lose focus and start to think you will miss things. But if you follow three or four stocks, you know, during the session, make up your mind. I'm going to buy these three stocks. You don't have to buy them all at once either. And you don't have to buy any stock all at once, meaning... Buy in tranches, buy in steps, buy a piece at a time, a third, a third, a third. You know, okay, let, let me give you an example of that, of what I'm talking about. If Uber, for example, broke out here and you want, it's $37. So say you have 10,000 bucks you want to put into it. You buy a, 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 um, 100 shares there, 100 shares there when it breaks out, and you can even buy another 100 there. It's, you can be scaling out as you go up though. You, you can scale out and you can scale in. That's what I'm talking about. People make a decision to sell, they sell everything. Then the stock keeps going up. And the number one question I get all the time is, how do I stay in the trade? I'm always selling too early. The reason why you're selling too early is you, don't, you have a profit and you don't want to give it up. But then when you get a loss, you, you, you sometimes psychologically, you don't, you don't want to take the loss, which is really a bad thing in trading. If you don't take a loss, it can get a lot worse than it usually does. And you never average down, you average up. But my best profits I ever made is when I had a stock that ran up, bought it, Added to it, added to it, added to it until it finally broke, rolled over and stopped me out. But if I bought three or four tranches in this stock and then it rolled over and stopped, say it stopped me out right there. Just say, my average out would be 37 and a half. But if I'm in here, here, and there, I'm averaging about 36 and a half. So I made a point on, you know, a thousand shares um, or whatever, you know, whatever the bottom line is, thousand um, dollars. Not a bad day trade. 10% too. Um, okay, so in keeping that in mind, um, the focus is what I'm talking about. Only follow six to 10 stocks and only have two or three trades. Meaning you can follow more, but don't be in them so you have to monitor them that closely. Most of what I'm doing, for example, if you're in the market in the morning and you like low price stocks, right? Then you're going to say, I'm only picking stocks under 15. So you can check off CHGG, EXPI, GDC, LABU, and maybe add SNTG or UIS. There's only six stocks on this board. If you want a stock over 100, if you want stocks over 100, you got them. BLDR, GNRC, INGR, LLY, and SMCI. So there's six there, of six of each. And if you like mid-range stocks, there's plenty of those. But my, my point is, whatever you're comfortable with, you need to know who you are as a trader what you're comfortable with. Because I think the number one thing is people don't learn from their mistakes. They don't use trading logs. 100% important. You keep a log of every trade you ever made. I want to know when you bought it, what price you bought it at, how many shares you bought it at, what the reason was. I want to know what your stops were when you bought it and what your targets were. When you sold it, same thing. That's how you learn from your own trading log. You don't need anybody to teach you anything. It, if you look at your mistakes and you look at your profitable stuff, you will learn that way. Of course, it's good to get instruction from someone like myself who's been around for many, many, many de decades. Okay, but um, and it's a comfortable place to be where there's a lot of really nice people, no uh, egos in my room, and no rude people because I eliminate them immediately. Uh, when I see that in my room, it's unacceptable. I also don't trade stocks under two ever. I just feel like that's 
if there's a reason why they're under two, okay? Um, so the preparation is important. What we look for is pre-market movers. And you know, I always get this question, well, where do you get the pre-market movers? Or how do you look at, what do you look for? Well, I got a certain site every morning that tells me just what I want to get. Hold on one second. It's called F, okay, it's, uh, here it is. Every morning I go to this site, thestockmarketwatch.com. I go to pre-market. I scroll down and it has a complete list of all the stocks in pre-market that are running up percentage-wise. Look at the gains in this one, 127, 111, 103%, 50. And it tells me how heavy the volume is too in pre-market. Now this is after the market closed, so it's no longer valid. Right now, what I'd be looking at is after hours. And it shows me all this percent gain is after hours. MDJH. By, by the way, folks, in my room, we don't stop trading. We trade all day and all night, pretty much. Not, I, I don't mean all night, but during pre and after hours. Let's just take a quick look at MDJH pre and take a look at what's going on. Exploded and pulled back. Does it afford a trade? It might. X-I-N. But the ideas are there. Pop. Falling wedge, pop another one. Maybe you get another trade out of this one. Uh, AAOI, that's not a good one. NYC, CHCI, thumb stock, nice pop. So there's what I get my ideas. I put them on a focus list in the morning. This is after hours, of course. But in the morning, I, I, put, I put on a focus list. And there's something, folks, that is in TC2000, which I use, as you can see, called volume buzz. It's one of the most important indicators ever made. This is called post buzz because it's after hours. But it tells you what percentage of volume is trading. Here's the stock trading 44% more than average after hours than it's traded after hours in the last 100 days on average. So it's, but it, the best part about this is in the morning, you come in, you'll see 1,500, 3,000, 5,000 percent more volume than average. That shows you where money flow. So that's how you get prepared. That's what I do for you when you come into my site and sign up for free for two weeks. Not even a credit card, but you got to lose, right? Okay, um, back to where we were, because I tend to get distracted at times. Jump around a little bit. The pre-market patterns are, are what determine the day trade possibilities. Simple as that. What I look for to identify candidates are the big percentage gains, not only in price, but I want to see percentage volume moves too. I want stocks, for the most part, that have some liquidity. People in my room are always coming up with ideas and I knock them down because they're just too thin. Now, sometimes you get a thin stock that's trading 10, 40 million shares, different story. It's, it's active enough that day to be a good day trade. An example of that today would have been well, CCOI, for example. It only traded half a million all day. And on average, you can see it probably trades about you know, half a million shares a day. But when you see a stock that breaks out inverse head and shoulders or a right-handed extended V or cup and handle, it breaks out across the double top. That was one of the reasons I put a day trade on. Broke out right there. And it just kept trending. And this line was drawn early in the morning with a 75 target. And it reached 74.90 within 10 cents. Um, I think I'm pretty accurate. People tell me on my... On my Targets are uncanny, but they're purely based on technical analysis. I'm not, you know, uh, pulling things out of the air, that's for sure. So um, we want to see stocks that have a price volume surge, a combination price and volume. And I want to see a reason in the morning. I want to see a stock that is showing me, uh, you know, FDA approval or major contract. Like uh, the other day, um, Laser, L-A-Z-R, had a 10-year major contract with Mercedes-Benz, and it took off and trended all day. And that's you know enough for me to, to to say that I want to be in a stock that is has got some energy and some. Um, here's a thin stock. They just came out with FDA approval on a non x ray imaging system. In other words, it doesn't use X rays. There's no radiation. This is an Israeli uh, tech co company, Medical Devices. That day it popped and pulled back, and we put a day trade on it. It was immediately results oriented. When it pulled back here, I put a swing on it. At around nine and a quarter, and it's today it reached 11.65, so it's already worked for us. 
and I have targets much higher. Take a look at the long-term chart of this one. A little freebie advice here. My swing target is 15. Across that level where it was a lot of uh, overhead resistance. And today it was a nice day trade actually because it came down, spiked up and formed a wedge. And when I, I tell my people, I told my people that I wanted to go long if it broke this wedge there, which it did. So we went long at about 1030. And a couple hours later, it was trading at 1120, 1115. So it was up about 80 cents. You know, it's a seven, eight percent trade. I'll take it. Um, so again, um, we're looking for stocks that um, are holding support, they're creating trend lines, uh, or, or early patterns, for example, coils, wedges, flags. They're all consolidation patterns. When a stock pops and does this, very often, two out of three times, if not 70% of the time, this stock will move higher. We see it so many times, time after time after time, every morning, you see a stock pop. Form some sort of flag or wedge there and make a higher high eventually. So if you trade in my room, you usually get a lot of good ideas because we follow certain patterns and rules. So getting back to focus, you focus on six to 10 stocks during a day, make sure they're within the kind of stocks that you're comfortable with. Whether they be small stop, small caps, medium caps, or large caps from NASDAQ 100 or blue chips. Um, don't be distracted. When you're trading, you're trading. If you're a professional trader, you've got to be in your room and lock yourself in your room. Of course, you can take a break here or there. But for the most part, pay attention. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Pay attention to what the charts are saying. Trade what you see, not what you think. Favorite expression of mine. The other one is when the ducks are quacking, feed the ducks, which means when people are clamoring for something and volume is heavy, exit the stock. It usually means it's coming down. Professionals and, and smart, experienced traders sell in, into big volume surges, especially on the fifth wave up intraday. Multiple waves up, one, two, three, four, five. That's probably an exit point for at least half your position. Then another run up, sell some more. See that line? That was my target, 34 and a half. It reached 35 and a half. From the morning pullback, low pre-market, uh, right when it opened, it was 32 and change. So it went up a couple points. Um, in addition to preparing in the pre-market and creating a focus list, and then being focused yourself, the hardest thing to do is to stay focused, stay on your screen, and continue to watch. Now, I'll do this all day, all day. I'm doing this. I'm just looking at the charts we're following to see if anything pops up that is unusual or a setup that's unusual, where I may say, for example, SMCI, which I did this morning. Let's go back on this one. Right there. It popped out of the flag, ran up early and formed a little pullback near the VWAP and near the price support, but it was a nice flag and it was on low volume. Look at the underlying technicals, how green they are. Well, this is what occurred. Pop, this is called an ascending bull wedge with tops of 127. My targets at the time were 130.31 and 130.45. And here's what, here's what happened. One thirty six sixty four was reached. And that's why I look for setups all day. And I'm constantly issuing I, look, 80% to 90% of my, my picks are in the morning. Some pre-market, some right at the opening. You may get one or two or three during the day when I see a nice setup. But for the most part, I'm not bombarding you all day with new trades because I'm following the old ones to milk them. Because the key to trading is not just making money, but it's trying to milk the trade, meaning stay in the trade as long as it's still doable. Why won't you sell the stock on that on, uh, uh, after it runs up here? Well, you have a stop there. It broke out and pulled back and started to move. We raised our stop to here. It broke out and pulled back and started to move. We raised our stop to there. Notice it did not break that stop all day. You could have stayed in that stock all day or chosen to sell the multiple wave move. Usually by lunch hour, check this out. I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven waves as opposed to five waves. If I've counted them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So most of us got out in the fifth wave here. At about 133 and change. 
but not bad considering we got in the 124 area. Rest of the day, you could have chose to hold it or not. I always say, take the profits when you can. Trade, trade what you can. Uh, sell when you can, not when you have to. And um, that'll be a good motto for you guys. Okay, trade what you, you know, trade what you see, not what you think, and sell when you can, not when you have to. And when the ducks are quacking, feed the duck. My three favorite phrases. And now you, you know what I, what phrases are like. Now. Um, in addition to um, how and where to draw trend lines and channels and support resistance line, that's stuff you'll learn in my room. That's not what you'll learn from reading. I highly recommend the book originally written in 1948 and uh, revised 11 times. It's called Technical Analysis of Stock Trends by Robert Edwards and John McGee, M-A-G-E-E. -E. That book sits right next to me, a foot away from my shoulder. Um, I read it seven times. It's the Bible of technical analysis, re uh, generally recognized by technicians like myself. Um, if you want to learn technical analysis, read that book and read it again and read it again. And look at all the patterns that are developing. Those patterns from 1948 are still good today because patterns are patterns and human beings are involved in, and they create those patterns by their emotions and by the way they trade stocks and the way they buy and sell. So that's one thing to learn if you want to learn about technical analysis. Um, and that, 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 look, I, I, I believe that I prepare you properly. I keep your focus during the day and I insist on your discipline by talking about stops and targets all day. And I will tell you to sell when I think a stock should be sold. And I don't care if a stock goes from five to 15 and I say sell it, it goes to 50. You tripled your money at 15, how bad can that be? Stop looking at where a stock went after you sold it and move on to the next stock. It's like planning over an old girlfriend. Can't do it. Just move on. Okay. Um, you know, let, let's talk about discipline. There's no question that stops are a must. And I insist every day I'm not in my room. I am constantly raising my stop. Raise your stop to here. Raise it to there. Exit here. Exit there. That's what you hear from me all day. And, and if we're taking profits. We're trying to every day. The one thing is where to set a stop, how to set a stop. I'm going to spend a minute or two on that. Trailing stops are stupid. All they are is, is you're afraid of losing money, so you want to protect your profit. When I say stupid, they're not, you know, they, they can be used. They're, they're fine. But when, when you want to really be precise, you have to set a stop below a recent pullback low, below support levels, below moving averages and trend lines. For example, when this thing pulled back and popped, wouldn't it be logical that if it went below that low, that it was, should be stopped? And even here, where it popped and formed this little flag and then broke out, you could have raised your stop to right there. And then it popped again and pulled back. Note, notice these highs because resistance becomes support. And notice how it came right down to the high, held it and bounced. And but by the by, in, in, during the course of this action, it created a perfect 45 degree rising angle. Most people don't realize that when a stock is running, it'll run on that angle from lower left-hand corner to upper right-hand corner, 45 degree angle. And when you see a stock in a 45 degree angle rising channel, all you gotta do is stay in the trade, stay in the trade, raise your stops. Target number one, sell some. Target number two, sell third. Target number three, sell the rest. That's the way I trade. You didn't have to be stopped out, you could have just sold it. Or when it got to target number three, you can say to yourself, you know what? I'm gonna hold it and see what happens. It pulled down, it bounced up, it pulled down. And then here is where your stop was. So you're stopped out right there. Not so bad. At 133. So again, discipline is important in terms of knowing where your stops and targets. And by the way, you need to know where your stops and targets are before you enter the trade. Let me emphasize that. Before you go into a stock, you need to look at the chart and say, okay, my targets to, you can see, by the way, these lines here usually mean overhead resistance and or um, stops. Look at this chart, and I missed it. Here's another example of a stock that I normally would be all over because here's what happened. A pop and a perfect coil, I mean perfect coil. 
No, it was thinly traded. I didn't go into it. At the time. But here's what happened after. When it popped out, I was a buy signal. Right there at 1353. Notice the volume picked up as well and the unbalanced volume as well. So this was a good trade to start. It never pulled back enough to be stopped. Check this out. All day. Now I had targets originally, I because someone asked me, so I, by the way, I, if, if I don't recommend a stock, I may give you guidance if you ask me. One thing about my site is there's a dozen or two dozen people all day asking me, what's the, what's the next target? Where's my stop? What's support? Swing, day trade, whatever. Bottom line is, that's my service. I, I give that to you and I, and I service you, um, I think better than anybody out of Wall Street. Look at this move, it's still going. Now we're in, if, we're, if we had done this right, at 13 and a half, here it is 1650, it's still going. Now what? It's still going. Or is it? Well, let's see what it does with the market closes. We have to close it pop. It's still 1650. So there was no point in this stock that you needed to sell it. It never broke a support level. What this, and when a stock's in a tight rising channel, the pullback close here, 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 can all be used as stops. But you can stay in the trade all day and just will go cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching as the stock keeps going up. That was a beautiful trade and I missed it. My apologies to the people in my room today. That's the way it goes. You know, we're following so many stocks, you will miss them on occasion. So, but but all day I'll be saying, telling you to raise your stop to there. Your, your target is there, sell a third, sell a third, sell a third, whatever. That's I think the way to trade, it makes real money in the market. So we've covered how to, how to where to set stops and targets. And targets can be set many ways. People always say, well, why is that a target? It's pos possibly a measured move. Measured moves are simply when a stock makes a move like this here, from 12.27 to 13.40, so $1.13, and breaks out here, you had a dollar thirteen to this breakout, and you're looking at fourteen fifty three. Well, fourteen fifty nine was hit right there, so I would have probably sold some, a third, um, and then you can add another dollar and change there, dollar thirteen to that, and get fifteen sixty. Yeah, right there it hit fifteen sixty, and then you get another third. But bottom line is. The stock tend to make some stocks tend to make measure moves. Stocks tend to move in five waves. This one didn't, um, but it's, you'll see other stocks that tend to move in waves. There's one, two, three, four, five. Look at the fifth wave did. It was the top, wasn't it? So, you know, I've been around long enough to know Fibonacci, Elliott wave, basic. Measure move analysis. So I'm able to set targets, I think a little bit more proficiently than, than many of you, only because you're not proficient in technical analysis the way my 60 some odd years of experience have taught me. Um, and one of the reasons why people come into my room. But so today we covered um, preparation in terms of the pre-market work you need to do. Every morning you need to come in if you're not doing the work yourself, you come into my room and watch what we're doing and then write down the focus list and choose from that focus list after I'm showing you what stocks to pick, which ones are the best for you in terms of the comfort level. Follow those three to six or 10 stocks, whatever you want to follow during the day closely. You'll see me going over the stocks as I do. And if not, you can always say, can I get an update on this stock or can I get a new target or stock? You can... Text me, I mean, private message me by clicking on my name. You can private message anyone in the room and have conversations back and forth with other traders. Feel free to ask them questions. There are so many real, generous mentoring type people in my room that if you're a newbie or new to trading, you will benefit by just being in the room. It's almost like a friend of mine once said that um, you could be half asleep at, at four years of college and get a good education. I'm not saying you need to be asleep in my room, but I tell you that there's a lot of things to learn just by being there, just by being there and observing. 
So we've covered everything I want to cover today for the most part in terms of preparation, focus, and discipline. And once again, we may remember one thing. If you trade stocks and you're in my room, I implore you, 100% must have stops at all times. And if you don't know where to stop or you're uncomfortable, you can always ask me or anyone else. A lot of times, like I'm not necessarily at the desk nonstop for eight and a half hours. I may, you know, grab a bite. I may go to the bathroom, whatever. And if there's a question out there that doesn't get answered, you see someone else jump on board on and probably give you an answer. That's just the way it is in my room. So again, in terms of how to analyze intraday trend development using pattern recognition, well, you can do that by being in my room and learning pattern recognition and day training. But if you're not prepared properly, if you don't have focus and you're not disciplined by using stops and targets, and they're not, and, get, and I don't mean mental stops and targets. There are a few, there's a few percentage of people out there that are experienced enough that when they see a stock break of support, they go market, sell at the market. When they see a stock break out, buy at the market. And by the way, when I buy, I rarely put a price in. Unless I see a big offer at a certain price, I will never put a price in. I will say market it with a limit. I may, may put a limit on For example, if the stock's trading at five and a quarter and I want to buy um, 10,000 at 528, um, I'll say with a limit of 530. You know, so to make sure I get all my stock. But what I hate is when I want to buy a stock, I get a partial trade and the stock runs away from me. I mean, it's okay to have a partial position, but, uh, but you, when you know a stock's going to go and you're not um, in your full position, it, it irks you. That's just like anything else. So um, that's pretty much my, my presentation for today, folks. I want to make sure that you guys um, knew a little bit more about the techtrader.com. I've been around since 2001. I'm considered the first trading room on the internet. That's what I've been told in June of, or July of 2001, shortly after the market crash. And the internet was really first getting going in 99 and there weren't too many people with, uh, with uh, chat, ch chat trading rooms like mine. There's another look at it. And you can see people talking about this. Right now, the banks are getting crushed after hours. Kicks and giggles, let's take a look at PACW. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Six and a half to 270, yikes. And WAL probably the same. Oh boy, 30 to 18, OMG. Well, um, one thing you will be when you're in my room is informed because I have a new source that when I see something, I am posting it. If you take a look back after hours, earnings came out on CTSH, Qualcomm, Corvo, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all day during the day, I'm posting stuff on from the FOMC, on individual stock charts, uh, bullish call activity, Whatever is important enough for, for I, I think, for, as a news, negative news, uh, Meta, the FTC, FTC proposes prohibition preventing Facebook from monetizing youth data. And that was, uh, you know, you saw the stock take a, a dive on that. But sometimes that's an opportunity. For example, I tell my people when it pops and starts to move, it's good for five points from 230, 233 to 239 away. 39 and a half, and then it pulled back down. But it's a nice little trade there. Um, and people who overreact sometimes, as soon as it turns, makes a lower low and reverses, that's where I go in. 235-ish, 240. Well, anyway, folks, I, I, I will end it there. I just wanted to say thank you for being here. And please check out my room, thetechtrader.com. Click on that for a free trial. And you're in like Flint. Thanks again, everybody. That's it for today. If there's any questions, be glad to take a few.